You are listening to the Body Charge Podcast, and I'm your host, Sandy Sanderson. Today's podcast is called Show Yourself Who is Boss. It's about self care and management, health discipline, and achievement of goals and happiness. And I'd like to welcome our guest today, Daniela Malozzi, on Facebook as the Happiness Queen. She's been supplying her clients with electromagnesium products for over six years now, and I'm so excited to talk with her. Daniela is English with an Italian heritage, so that makes her a little bit spicy. She moved to Australia seven years ago and has been working in the health sector for over a decade. She is a muscle corrective specialist and life coach, helping people to avoid unnecessary operations and pain medications. Daniela is passionate about helping people tap into their deepest inner happiness and potential as a human being. After enduring six traumas from the age of 11 to 22, she uses the years of transformational work to teach and help others. She believes life is supposed to be fun and is on a mission to help as many people as she can to achieve similar levels of joy, peace and happiness. Welcome, Daniela. My first question today is what demographics do your typical clients come from and how do you help them achieve their goals? Great question, Sandy, and thank you so much for having me here. I always enjoy talking to you. We always have very big, powerful, positive conversations, which are my favourite. So, yes, demographic. Good question. It really varies. The, the general demographic can be anything from eight years old to 98. But the most um, popular age group at the moment, I would say, is 25 to 55. There seem to be a good amount of people within that bracket. Yes, would they be um, mostly women, mostly men, a mixture of the both? Absolutely varies. Um, The kind of people that I get are people who have been on a healing crisis or merry-go-round for a long period of time, one to two years, 10 to 20 years, and they're looking for an alternative approach to muscular or skeletal problems. Mm -hmm. So they tend to come to me for acute or chronic conditions such as you know, the general aches and pains in the muscles that don't ever seem to go away with other treatments. And then some people will come and they'll complain that they've had two years worth of support for their frozen shoulder, but it's still there. Or they don't, they don't want to have that knee operation. They don't want to have a knee replacement. So they say, can you help me? And that's what I'm really passionate about. And that kind of happened organically, Sandy, as you know, the best things often do. Yeah. So I would, I always thought that I kind of had the image of you as helping like athletic people increase performance and, you know, I didn't really think of you originally as um, just the problem solver, uh, not just the problem solver, I mean, primarily the problem solver by helping the athletes, you know, you know, the gym people, uh, you know, but it, it kind of creates a bigger, more in-depth uh, 360 degree picture when you count all the people that come to you to help solve problems where where they they can't get solutions from the hospital from the doctor from medications from you know all the other typical things um that we might reach for because we're taught to (laughs) and and then they don't work and people go well what else is there out there and they start looking so how would they come to you do you do other people recommend you or do they connect with facebook very minimal advertising because I think when when you go to a good restaurant well I actually say when you go to a bad restaurant you tell more people than when you go to a good but when you go to a good restaurant or watch a good movie you want to share that with someone so I do find that word of word of mouth is my highest and largest referral I worked in a small town in the Blue Mountains for seven years I've just um, eased going up there at the moment and and I don't I don't think I advertised more than a handful of times and in a small town word travels quite quickly so I think um yeah you 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 made an interesting point there when I first started I was told by all these business coaches you need to find a demographic you need to have a target group and that didn't resonate with me because I don't believe one size fits all and I don't one of my top values which is something I help people identify is um 
uh, variety. So I didn't just want athletes. And I thought with these little hands, even though they're strong, got my dad's hands, thanks dad. Um, even though they are strong, just working on athletes with really strong viscous muscles, I just felt that I wouldn't be able to sustain that level. But ironically, the person who trained me worked at the Australian Institute of Sport and muscle corrective therapy, which is the technique I use, was specifically designed to get the athletes back onto the pitch as quick as possible. Now I categorize people, I've got my blue, my blue people and I've got my green people. It just helps me to have a general idea on their primary sense. So a blue people, a blue person and Sandy, you are the perfect balance of both because the blue aspect is the science, the evidence, mm -hmm. the, the facts, the double blinded studies and the green aspect is the spiritual, the emotional, the feeling. So I decided I didn't wanna just go for the blue people and I didn't just wanna go for the spirit people how do I allow for something that connects to both so I, I stepped into my power both as an athlete I really upped my skills I did a personal training diploma in injury prevention through exercise for two and a half years and really began my journey as an athlete you know an athlete someone that goes to the gym regularly and starts to really understand what that process is about and then spiritual aspect I don't believe there is ever a physical problem without an emotional ailment. And that became a juicy passion to help somebody have a deeper level of awareness on their pain. And after finding that deeper level of awareness, the muscle problem would go faster. So for me, that's the an ethical therapist. I don't want you to have to have lots of sessions with me, with all due respect, as much as we might get on. My job as a therapist is to help fix your back body into a state of balance and then give you the tools and the techniques for you to go on your way and maybe pop back for a maintenance session every now and then. Well, we get our car maintenance maintained regularly, don't we? Service, yeah. grease and oil change, change the tires. Oh, we, we yeah. don't actually look after our body as well as our cars so often. Different. Now, so what true. you said was interesting mm -hmm. about the different types of people. It sounds to me like the left and the right brain. You know, some of us are more right brain dominant, mm -hmm. some more left brain dominant. But we have to learn to work as one unit, one whole piece. And we're not just mind, we're not just body, we're not just soul, we're one whole piece incorporating everything. So when people have traumas or excessive stress or they're nutritionally deprived or, some, or chemically exposed, you know, all of these things can cause stress, which puts us out of balance. Um, and that then causes problems and stress. And it's interesting because the muscles, correct me if I'm wrong, hold memory. And if you've had traumas and stresses or an accident or something that's happened to you, and it's, it's very emotionally upsetting, that memory is held in the muscle. I've spoken to many massage therapists who've said often they're massaging and the person will just break down emotionally and tears will roll down their cheek because they happen to have released something that's stuck in a really hard muscle. Do you, a lovely do you get that? Like say about a, lovely, um, a lovely statement. I like quotes. I tend to remember quotes and things like that um, easily. I wish I could remember jokes as well, but hey. Um, the issues are stored in the tissues. We have a thing called a myelin sheath, and I liken it to the cable covering of an electric wire. So imagine now that you've had a trauma, and a trauma by definition is a, an, a, an incident that created deep upset. So deep, they use the word deep in the word of in the way of defining trauma. So now you've got this myelin sheath and the myelin sheath is covering your nerves. And you've heard people say that they're getting on my nerves. I'm having a nervous breakdown. There's a reason for that. Words are so deliciously powerful. And there is a reason that we have linked that word nerves with nervous breakdown because your nerves hold the pattern in place. Now, Tony Robbins explained this so, so well when I was going through my breakthrough at the age of 19 I was desperate for information I was I felt failed by the societal system parents divorced like I was grasping for role models and I was so grateful to find Tony Robbins Abraham Hicks Joe Dispenza Bruce Lipton these were like my parents I felt like they parented me largely in my spiritual growth and I find it so interesting he said that it trauma literally shakes up your sheath and that means that it can get trapped in your nerve encasing. And that's why Tony Robbins does a large amount of physical movement in his courses, because he's literally trying to get people to shake up their myelin sheath. In doing that, that's when you can have a physical release. And there is a muscle called the psoas major. 
It's a deep muscle. It's the largest muscle that connects top to bottom, back to front. It's really deep on the lower back and you can find it on the front because it links to the hip flexor, the rec fem, rectus femoris. That muscle, when I touch that muscle and I hold that muscle, people drop into a state of nostalgia, familiarity. Sometimes I've had sadness, tears. Sometimes I've had elation. It's such a, because I call that the powerhouse muscle. Just releases um, everything. Yeah. Or yeah, even if it, because sometimes the body's not ready to release. Like I, I love the human body. I treat my body like it's my best friend. And sometimes your best friend's not ready for the same things that you are. So you have to wait for your best friend to be ready. And you have to, that's why I think it's really important to be present in every moment. What is your body ready for? So if somebody comes to my treat for my treatment, it might not be for everyone, Sandy. They might come along and they might not be ready to release that. And so it's scary. So a lot of well, people can feel nothing, afraid. Nothing happens overnight with the body. And that's how nature works. It's in steps. And then the steps have a certain order. And before you get to the goal, you have to do this and this and this first in a certain order. And then you get to the goal. You can't actually get there overnight. It's not instant noodles. <laughs> like someone saying, I tried the magnesium cream, but it didn't cure my cramps straight away. So I don't think it uh, works. I, I went to the gym and I lifted a bicep, but I don't seem yeah. to have biceps. Anymore, so I don't think it works. It's, it's understanding that process. But do you know what's, do you know what's divine about that? life is a process and if you can understand that yeah. there is a process to everything you've kind of mastered an aspect of life you can't just expect things to happen and if you know that they won't just happen you naturally start to prepare for that aspect of growth and work i think and that's, that's, that's why the they way. refer to faith faith when you understand and you have the knowledge of the truth of something so the the facts the science the what is and then you employ that knowledge to yourself, you know that it's going to take steps, but incrementally every time um, there's a, um, an improvement, it's a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And you know you're on the way to somewhere and you have to have faith that you will get there and just get through the process. And sometimes it might be painful. Sometimes it might be you know, unpleasant and the, the medicine might be bitter, but yes. with the right knowledge, you know that you're going to get there and it's a temporary process. You have yeah. to get to the other side. You know, I, I was thinking about this the other day and I had to get a scale and clean from the dentist. Oh, I really hate to go to the dentist. And, but, I, you know, I know it's good for me and I had to get some calc off. How do we change that viewpoint? How can we make you love it? I love I, going to the dentist. Oh, really? Well, you know, what oh, I do gosh. is I, I think myself to the other side. I'm sitting in the chair. He's a really lovely bloke. He's got a lovely, gentle way about him. And so I can't, cannot fault the dentist in any way, but it's me I have to work on. So I use my mind and I think myself to the other side that it's finished, it's over, and I'm not <laughs> focusing. I don't want to focus on the now. <laughs> I get through it that way. <laughs> Oh, you know what the brain the brain has 50 to 80,000 thoughts a day apparently studies have shown 50 to 80,000 thoughts so I truly believe that there are three steps to happiness and my book is coming out very soon I just wanted a formula for happiness because I often get told why are you so happy how are you so happy all the time now just take that example which is golden me and you very similar in our passion and our you know zest for life and we're both sitting in that dentist waiting room you are sitting there and your nervous system is reacting to your thoughts now not the ones where you've done really well and trained yourself to be happy but the original ones that go oh, i don't like this because it's uncomfortable it's oh, grainy. It can stomach shock. clenches and up and you and you get to my mouth in there. Yeah, it's all the Before adrenaline. you're even in there, <laughs> yeah. that shows you how powerful the mind is uh -huh. so we're sitting there and we're next to each other and you're shaking you're now body is reacting to your mind okay your palms are sweating your heart might have you know increased its palpitations and I'm sitting next to you calm as a whistle and we're both going to have the same treatment now what is the difference between these two humans a mind attitude Just the way that we yeah. mind attitude exactly now I could have sat there and thought what you were thinking and had a similar response in my nervous system and you can sit there and train yourself to think what I was thinking and have a similar response and this is the best example to really define that this is so this lands so well when you say this to anyone and it landed so powerfully with me um 
When we watch a movie, we suspend all disbelief to the point that we could cry, we could laugh, we could shout, we could scream, we could jump. But we know on a fundamental level that that movie is not real, but we believe it like it is. So when I learned that, something clicked into place for me. Fake it till you feel it. So I just started to look at what this word belief is. And the word belief even has the word lie, smack bang in the middle of it. So I realized that if I just keep telling myself something over and over again, my body starts to believe it like it's real. And I thought, this is like a magic trick. And I just did it over years. There was the first thing I ever did was gossip. I didn't like gossiping. I didn't enjoy people talking unkindly about others. And I was finding myself doing it and getting a, a buzz off it. You know, like when you're scrolling through Facebook or, and I just didn't enjoy that feeling. So I thought, what can I do to challenge myself? And I asked this woman who looked really positive and vibrant. I said, oh, how do you keep yourself so positive and vibrant? Because I think ask great questions, you'll get great answers. And this lady told me that she wears a positive bracelet, a little piece of string around her wrist that's easily movable. And she would have a thought that she didn't enjoy and she would stop, take the bracelet off one wrist and put it onto the other wrist. And as she did that, she would replace the thought from a negative to a positive. She did that for 21 days because apparently it takes 21 to 28 days to form or break. Anchor it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So she did that. So I thought oh, maybe I can do that with the gossiping. Every time I catch myself gossiping mm -hmm. or listening to gossip, I quickly say something really nice about that person. That was in 2011, Sandy. Even today, when I hear people gossiping, it makes my skin crawl. Cringe. Yeah. I, uh, something. So it, it, yeah, there's something quite magical about how the muscles work. I remember when I was 15 and I got my first casual job with Kmart, they'd just come into Australia and we were taught to smile and say, thank you for shopping at Kmart. And the, um, the trainer was telling us, even if you feel lousy, smile anyway, fake it till you make it. And there's a little phase lag, but then you actually feel better. You feel the emotions come after the muscles move to the smiling position and actually make you feel happy. So, so there is something to that um, nerve, nerve messaging system. When the muscles are in that position, the brain's going, you know what? I need to produce some chemicals to go with that smile. <laughs> yes. And there's a wonderful book. I think it's called 54321 Do It. I can't remember the author's name, forgive me. And I love her, um, her theory around training your brain to react after you get down to, to one. So she said, for people that are struggling to get out of bed, for people that are struggling with anxiety, maybe they they can't get outside easily, you train your brain to respond. So this is what you're talking about. It's muscle memory. You are creating and you're teaching your body to unlearn negative muscle patterns. That's what I do with my job. So five, four, three, two, one, get up and just get up out of bed. Five, four, three, two, one, just get out of the house. You know, five, four, three, two, one, get out of the bath. Five, four, three, one, jump into the icy cold pool. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. That must be so how Wim Hof did, does it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you how Wim Hof did it. Wim Hof used the pain of the ice to override the pain of his traumas, Sandy. And I relate to that with my experience. When you're in a lot of pain and you don't realize you're in pain, you seek you seek for anything to give you comfort. You seek to self-medicate, which is why often people drop and delve into drugs and alcohol and promiscuity because they're just trying to self-medicate and they don't know how else to do that. So I have a large amount of compassion for anyone who's in prison, which I believe is usually three major things that have gone wrong in your life and you didn't get sufficient support with that yourself or from others. Um, so I have a large amount of compassion and you would have after having six traumas, you're either going to go one way or the other. You're going to become a victim or, you know, abuser, or you're going to become somebody who's highly enlightened. For me, enlightened means being in the light and light just means positivity, compassion and understanding. You are truly the phoenix that rose from the ashes six times. Yeah. Six, yes. Wow. Wow. So I'm that so means you have a mission. I think people that have gone through something really bad and emerged triumphant and didn't let them let the event get the better of them, they are here to be our teachers. And and that's I think who you are, a teacher. I agree. And I think that I 
by rights, I should not be alive by now, or I should have some serious problems in the way that I could have dealt with those traumas. But instead, I have this extraordinary amount of compassion and gratitude. And the compassion comes from when I think about each of those people that created those traumas. And I think, I wonder how they are. I wonder how they continue to live their life knowing what they did, because my scars have healed. And I've able, I'm able to be a happier, positive person. But I often wonder how they are and ironically I've created a job that allows me to kind of attract those kind of people so that I can help them yeah so I think very transformational less- yes how do you use the magnesium in your therapies let's say um, someone comes to you with pain um, or muscle issues and they don't know how to fix it and they you know want to avoid opioids and getting addicted to medications um, how would yeah. you use magnesium in that scenario? Great question. I don't sell anything other than magnesium. It's the only thing I sell. Your products for me are the highest elemental grade that I have found in this country. I've been living here seven years. I've tried to find food grade certified magnesium flakes and have not. Even to this day, every year, I just check in just to see if anything's popped up. Nothing. Even to this day. So for me, quality is essential. I believe if you want to live an extraordinary life, you have to be extraordinary yourself. So I asked a lot of questions to a lot of intelligent people. One of you were one of them. And I asked lots of questions like, what does the body need on a fundamental level to thrive? And of course, the periodic table keeps coming up, the potassium, the zinc, the B12, the, the calcium. And, but magnesium came up so often in my quest as a spiritual being it was linked to the Pleiadians. That's a conversation for a whole nother time. And it was linked to maintaining muscle health and, you know, people with anxiety are def- deficient in it. And, and then I'm watching things on Netflix and it's like, quick pregnant woman, get the 500 milligrams magnesium. And I'm thinking, wow, you can give magnesium to a pregnant woman. I didn't think you could give many things to. So things just continually happened. And then obviously, as I started to become a muscle therapist, I was a massage therapist to start with, and then a remedial sports correction, I found that the fundamental fastest way to mend a muscle was to give it the right minerals in order to do that, not actually rest and ice and all that jazz. It was the mineral that it needed to mend. And what is that mineral? Magnesium. Magnesium. And magnesium magnesium chloride seems to be the most readily uptakeable form. So the way I see it is why bother with the rest? I know each has its place, but why not go straight for the top? I'm not going to settle. So I found the chloride is the the, the just the strongest means for me. And so I physically use it on the muscles. And and no need to digest anything because we can absorb exactly. it through the skin. So um, well, do you find it that patients or sorry clients who come for a massage, for instance, they feel the relaxation effect straight away when you're using the magnesium and incorporating into the massage because of the when you're manipulating the muscle, the lymph gets a bit of a workout as well. Um, every the circulation improves. So the magnesium does that for you tend to penetrate more quickly in that scenario. So yeah, interesting. I wouldn't say that they notice it instantly themselves, but they do notice it when they're using it. So I have so many different clients using it for different things. I have people, my greatest story for me is this beautiful 62 year old gentleman who used to laugh at any kind of creams and things like that. He was a Voltaren every month kind of guy, um, Voltaren cortisol, which by the way, they do not hand out easily in England at all. It's like a very strong medication, which seems to be handed out quite often here. And I believe that the more you take something the less impact it can have if it's not natural so I worry that people's livers are getting damaged here and you you spoke about magnesium being easy to digest that's actually really important the gut I I believe has such a big job to do 70% of immune system 90% of serotonin production that's a that's a lot of work so the way I see it is if I can avoid another job for my gut I will so that's why I only 
Uh, exactly. I only promote magnesium through the skin. So I use the magnesium oil and the creams during my treatments. They don't notice it as much as I do because I notice the, the movability of the muscle, the pliability and the malleability seems to be easier for me. And they'll notice that it will tingle in the areas where it's needed most because it's stimulating those nerve endings. But this is the best story. This gentleman, he said, I'm not using that. Oh, really? A magnesium cream? You know, he laughed. And anyway, I think one day he was on holiday and he hadn't he didn't have access to the Voltaren and his wife had the magnesium oil. And he used to suffer really badly with a bulging disc, which would um, impinge his um, sciatic nerve and he would get sciatica shooting down the back of his leg. And oftentimes sciatica is just where the muscle, the piriformis muscle has compressed the nerve. So if you're using enough magnesium and the muscles are relaxed, you will alleviate that pressure a, a lot of the times. So this gentleman used the oil and went straight back to sleep. He put the oil on his calves and the back of his uh, lower back, went back to sleep. And when he came in for his next session he was very shocked he said to me wow that stuff works you know I said yeah it does <laughs> I always like it when you have the non-believers but the yeah. people that I don't have to convince they get it they say to me wow bodybuilders say to me I just feel happier when I use it this other mm -hmm. gentleman he said to me I do notice a difference you know I noticed that I don't have cramps for as long because he rides motorbikes and he says I noticed that I, I actually sleep through the night now I don't seem to be waking up as much yes. and people with sugar cravings people don't mm. have as much sugar cravings yeah because I mean, that's that a seesaw crazy. isn't it between the sugar and the magnesium it's a seesaw and Can also because that? that's a big one what yeah, how so magnesium the lower the magnesium reserves the more sugar sensitive we become um, because magnesium is directly related to cell metabolism so your mitochondria make atp our energy currency using magnesium and as it drops lower your metabolism drops because the mitochondria can't make enough ATP without enough magnesium there. And therefore you, you want more of an instant fix. So you crave the sugar more because that's like a quick flash in the pan kind of energy yeah. upper to stop you going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> hence why i mean i've got on my wall every disease in the world is contributed to magnesium deficiency i've heard over five doctors say that now over seven years so i'm happy with that they've done their studies and yeah. for me seven years six years experience using the products now it's the electrical system really yeah. you're plugging into a power point with magnesium yeah. and that's why it does so many things it affects all of the body systems and you but mentioned what me, Sandy, is that people don't know about it. Even today, when I'm talking about the importance, people have to look at me for a second to think, are you just trying to sell me a cream? And I, and I educate. For me, it's not about selling. It's about sharing. When you really are passionate about something, I would never sell anything that I'm not 100% in full belief of. It's about experience, it's isn't it? You've had experience with it. Your clients have had experience with it. And now you mentioned yeah. about, um, you talked a lot about muscles, um, an important component in muscle health is hydration. So in your experience, if someone is dehydrated, how do you find the muscles behave in that situation? And what difference does it make to be well hydrated with electrolytes in the water? Can, have you noticed so, so good. Massive one that I've noticed is with somebody with diabetes, somebody who drinks an excessive amount of alcohol or consumes an excessive amount of sugar. This is crazy. Their muscles feel rubbery. They feel different. The texture, they're viscous, they're calcified, they're wiry. I always make jokes and say, are you planning on being in a band? Because it feels like we've got guitar <laughs> strings going on here. And the difference between a healthy tissued body, let's say the difference between a 60 year old's natural tissue compared to a 20 year old's natural tissue. But now let's bring the alcohol and the dehydration down to the 20s. They could feel in their body the same way as a 60 year old's natural mass muscle tissue. But I feel my 84 year old client has healthier muscle tissue than some of my 30 year olds. And this gentleman hydrates daily through magnesium. He doesn't have baths, but he uses the creams and the oils and he does consume very healthy food. So, so muscles, mus different. muscles need a lot of uh, moisture. They, they hold muscles a lot more water and minerals. 
they need to slide and glide and water and magnesium is a is a wonderful component to naturally allow that muscles need to move easily and they get sticky and shorten over time due to trauma or overuse or poor nutrition or high levels of stress because actually stress induces um, oxygen deprivation and if the muscles don't have enough breath because breathing is an impact on the muscles as well a lot of shallow breathers and people that are highly stressed their muscles don't feel healthy to me either no so so oxygen blood flow circulation uh we and we need water for all that we need hydration so i know you mentioned a lot now about transdermal magnesium but our magnesium flakes being food grade can also be used to remineralize the filtered drinking water which makes water more hydrating for the body so cells are more likely to take up magnesium water or the water with the magnesium in it and hydrate and flush out toxins much better. So that makes them able to become spongy and inflated and compress and expand and compress and, you know, behave like normal muscles and conduct electricity. Yes. Power. And I love that. I love that juicy, the skin as well. I've noticed um, yeah. since using, I often, and I know you do too, Sandy, but I often get told, oh, you don't look your age. You don't look your age. And when you're told that for a consistent amount of time, you do sort of stop and go, why? Why do some people look older? And why do some people look younger? And it's not a judgment. It's an no. observation. Now, I know I've got some Italian in me and you've got some beautiful um, heritage in there that gives I'm a you bit juicy <laughs> dewiness. <but> it's... <laughs> But it's more than that. It is the hydration and the electrolytes. I've found since using my magnesium daily, because I use it on a, as a daily um, healthcare routine, I have a magnesium bath every morning where I meditate for the 20 minutes that I'm in there because it takes 20 minutes to penetrate all seven layers of skin. So I may as well do my 20 minute meditation, double up, and then I get out and I put the magnesium zest cream on my face and then I mix the cream and the oil from my neck down. And I do that twice a day. I just incorporated that into a self-love routine and I found that my skin is doughy and juicy and don't we all want to be like that we don't want to be dry and hard and crusty as we as we age I think aging is inevitable but growing old is optional and I don't choose to grow old thank you very much yes so thank you for keeping me dewy do, yes nice and juicy we we can actually age gracefully and have a good quality of life if we make sure our environment and our health and nutritional lifestyle are in balance and that's bringing us back to how we started this conversation um what what are the things we need to be happy and healthy do we need why do we need challenges it seems to me you know people get bored um, and they get listless and maybe even depressed if there's nothing new on the horizon, if they're not pushed if to, to find more their outer boundaries or, you know, what their potential is. Sometimes we need a little bit of a push to, you know, even a crisis. You know, the Chinese have a saying, a crisis is opportunity riding the dangerous wind. When, when, when a problem arises and people come to you with a muscle problem or some kind of issue to solve, it then leads them on a path, a better pathway afterwards. So they could look back and go, well, you know, if that problem hadn't have happened, I would not have discovered this and I wouldn't have been able to improve my life there. Do you find that? Everyone can say that. If I say to people, I want you to tell me the worst thing that ever happened to you. And then they tell me, and then I say, and now tell me why it was the best thing that ever happened to you. And everyone, I'm not joking, not one person has ever said to me, what? That doesn't make sense. Everyone has stopped for a minute and, and thought, yeah, if I didn't have that happen, I wouldn't have gone there, I wouldn't have met him. So I just, I, I call it cut the crap coaching. I just go straight for the jugular. I'm not wasting your time and money. I'm getting straight there. That's so, why you're a good life um, coach. <laughs> Yeah, no nonsense. But I tell you, that's a really interesting point, that one. I would say um, that I believe the reason we need to be challenged is because biologically, if you go back, when a person eats a berry, let's say we're back in the old, um, you know, hunter gatherer days, you and I, we go out and we eat a berry and we look at each other and our brain lights up with dopamine and maybe some of the other happy chemicals. And we look at each other and we go, oh, should we get another one? And once we finish those berries, we go, well, what now? There's no more berries, Sandy. What should we do? So then we try to find something else to elicit that similar or better feeling. Now, 
I believe that that is actually a biological need to keep us moving forward because when you're comfortable, people often say the comfort zone should be called the death zone because actually we don't grow. And I believe some people say we're here to procreate. Some people say we're here to, you know, achieve something. I believe we're here to grow and growing could be having a baby. Growing could be getting a job, but growth to me means not staying still. And if you look at the human life scale, you don't just stay at the age of two. You don't stay married for five years you know there's always a progression in life so if you went to the gym and you started on you know a 2k dumbbell that might be really challenging when you first start but eventually your body adapts now will you get the same level of satisfaction once your body has adapted to that weight no mm. You won't, because once you've adapted to it, it's no longer enjoyable because the challenge is what makes it enjoyable. You so have now, to look what for you a, have new, to a new mountain to climb. Exactly. You've got to increase the weight or increase the challenge. So have you found that I do a lot of couples coaching and I find it fascinating that couples create problems when things are going smoothly? Why? Because they're bored. People need passion. They need fire. People need to fix a problem. They'll, so if there's no problem to fix, they create one or they'll bring up. Uh, Remember that time you looked at my sister back in 1954? Well, I'm really not happy about it. What? Mm -hmm. That was over 10 years ago. So I, I, I recognize mm -hmm. the human need and the human desire to grow and experience joy. And joy changes as you change. And so we I feel a sense... We, we do feel a great sense of satisfaction and joy after we've done something ourselves, achieved, done something difficult, and we've done it on our own. And we feel like we're the conqueror, the king, we overcame yeah. something. So if you are faced with a challenge and you're in capacitated by the fear like a rabbit in the headlights you you know you've allowed the fiction of the fear to overtake you and you can't go through this difficult part you yes. looking at that icy cold water and go I'm not going in there yeah, and <laughs> how do you, how do you overcome that great question because that point you're talking about is when we go into the reptilian brain when we go into the reptilian brain which is very important actually it's our fight flight freeze or flock we actually need that part. It's very important. However, once we're in the reptilian brain, which is at the back of the brain, we bypass the critical thinking part of the brain, which means we often just react mindlessly. So I train people to put themselves into that situation regularly so that they can become accustomed to that part of their body. And now people thrive off that moment of discomfort. They're not afraid so of it. They're not, well, they're, they're not afraid to be afraid. They've yeah. embraced the pain. So when someone comes to me and they say they're in pain, I go, brilliant. How smart is your body? It's giving you a, a phone call. So let's have a look. What does your body want you to pay attention to? And I try to get people to change their viewpoint. I think that the, the happiest people are the most adaptable and flexible. So if we can't change a thing, let's change the way we see that thing. Sandy, that brings me to my little book. There are three major points, I believe, to the to the, the stairway to happiness. And if I'd love to share that with you. Please. If I may. Manage your mind, love your body, and be present. So let's break that down in an example. I am from England. We are wimps. Everything is central heated. And if I had a dollar for every time an Australian said to me, you're from England, you should be used to the cold, I wouldn't need to work again. Okay? <laughs> so we are not used to the cold. We are pathetic wimps. All right, I'll speak for myself. So I decided I don't like hearing myself say that limitation anymore. I used to say, I'm not a morning person. I need eight hours sleep. I have to be in bed. I, I, don't, I can't go to bed before 11. So I started hearing myself saying this and I thought, Who's choosing to that's say that's me? I, don't need yeah. <laughs> I need you well, here. Used to be me. It used to be me. Don't worry, I'll crack you. I'll crack you, Sandy. Someone crack me. So I thought I don't want to say that. I don't enjoy limitations, and I believe I'm here to transcend the limitations of my mind and body. So I said to myself, if I was coaching myself, what would I do? Well, if you don't like something, I would push somebody towards that thing to enable them to interact with it in a way that softened that disdain or dislike. Not with everything, but you know, with some things that are gonna better you. So I decided to start changing. So let's use that example. Manage your mind, love your body, be present. So I said, I don't wanna be a morning, I want to be a morning person. So I had to manage my mind. So I started to say, I enjoy waking up early. 
And I started to say that, like not religiously, but I said it as a background in my brain for about a week before I started that challenge. So I got my body used to hearing that phrase because it felt very alien on the Monday. But by, by the time I got to Sunday, it felt like it was a part of me, that statement, even though it wasn't actually true. So I managed my mind. Then I loved my body. As I decided that I was going to start waking up for 5.30 in the morning for a whole month, because I know it takes that, that amount of time to make a new pathway. So I was going to challenge myself for a month. So I thought, if I'm going to wake up at 5.30 in the morning, that's a shock to my system, because I'm not used to that. So how can I love my body through that experience? Because I also thought in that challenge, I'm going to jump in the ocean, because that is even bigger. But by the way, that wasn't in my mind at the beginning. Remember what we spoke about having to make the mountain higher and higher? Well, once I'd cracked the 5.30 in the morning, I needed a bigger mountain. So then it was ocean swimming in winter. So anyway, so I managed my mind. I started to say what I wanted as if it was a present affirmational statement in the present tense. And then I loved my body. I thought, how would I need to feel good in the morning? I went to bed at nine o'clock every night for that whole month, which was unheard of for me. It was really early, but that was me loving my body. And I knew that if I ate crap food or heavy foods or you know any kind of foods that didn't fill me with nutrition, I wouldn't feel good in the morning. So I decided to love my body and make it easier for me in the morning. And then the third step is being present. So that just means that when I wake up in the morning and I go, oh, I really don't wanna get up. And my ego comes up with every excuse under the sun. I just stay in the present moment. And I say, remove the emotion, remove the fact that this is hard. Five, four, three, two, one, do it, let's go. And then I'm standing there about to get in the ocean and it is freezing. It's 13 degrees. And this crazy girl is in a bikini about to step into the freezing cold ocean. So in that moment, how do I manage my mind? How do I love my body? And how do I be present? Because that is the art of happiness in my experience. So I stand there and I go, flood your mind with the benefits of this. Cold therapy is going to drop weight. Cold therapy is going to increase my immunity. Cold therapy is going to make me look younger, feel younger, feel fresher. Great. Manage my mind. How do I love my body? Cold therapy is going to make me feel amazing. It's going to make me have a better hunger. I'm going to crave better foods and I'm going to sleep better tonight and I'm going to be healthier. And then stay in the present moment. Don't think about how cold it is. Don't think about getting out. Don't think about that coffee. Don't think about anything. Just be here now. And I took one step forward and another step forward and another step. And I said every swear word under the sun, which amused everyone in the sea. And I just let myself be playful and present in the moment. And then I dived in. And you know something, once you do it once, it doesn't get easier. I'm not saying that I jump into the ocean now going, oh yes, I love cold. But something changes, something has changed permanently inside of me. And that is now my fear of the cold, my fear of waking up and not wanting to get up. I've overridden that now with my enjoyment of having such a great day after waking up that early. And my response to getting out of that water is immense. And it's now easy. It feels easier to do the it. I think the greatest achievement really is to overcome our fears um, by using the body and these physical practices is a way for us to train to govern our fear. So the spirit then is in control, not the physical flesh, but, but we as human beings, the drivers of the body are the boss. And that brings us back to our, um, uh, title of our podcast show yourself who is boss so when yes. people, people get stuck or depressed or feeling like they're in a revolving door and they can't get out they can't make the changes they want um you know you've been very inspiring and uh, um, i'm all motivated to go out there and do this mind thing with getting yes, up at 5 30 in the morning i gotta do it i gotta, <laughs> gotta do the challenge Oh, look, it's a challenge. If I can get to bed at nine o'clock and get up at 5.30, I'm, I'll, get, I'll get a medal for that, let me tell you. All right, let, let's make it an easier challenge. <laughs> let's make it an easier challenge. I started for one year with cold showers. Now, hear me out. I'm not that brave. It wasn't just only cold showers. So I'd have my normal hot shower. And then I would do 40 rounds, so 40 Wim Hof breaths, which is essentially breathing in more than you breathe out. 80% in. 
20% out. And I did that for 40 breaths. And what that does is it oxygenates the body. It creates um, more oxygen in the cells, which seems to help manage the cold. So I did 40 breaths. And then on the last breath, standing in the shower, I breathe out. Now he, he never promotes to do this in the shower. So please take that, you know, make sure you're comfortable and you, you know, you're not lightheaded, but I'm safe enough to do that because I was doing it without being in the shower for a period of time, disclaimer. Um, so then I would do my 40 breaths and then I would turn off the heat and endure the cold water for as long as I can, Sandy. And I did that for a year. Every hot shower turned into a cold. Some days it would be half a second. Some days it would be a minute. Some days five minutes. So I would recommend doing that as a startup because the, the ocean I think, is easier. I think the ocean is easier than the cold showers. Yeah. So let's make that easy. Okay. But you were going to ask me about helping people with depression. I wanted yeah. to give a simple Yeah. So how yeah. can they get out of a rut? Let's call it a rut where they just right. feel like stuck. Okay. Does it does it help when they connect with other people? Is this missing thing maybe social connection? And you know, and coming to you helps reconnect socially because they they have a kind of a two way street. Then they're not just revolving around in their own mind, stuck. Always good to bounce off people, but Sandy, I don't want to create people that are. I, I want to help people create deep enough connections with themselves that they don't feel they need others. Now, don't get me wrong. We are social creatures and we do need connection in my experience. We do. We do, we do need to physically be touched and we do need to be physically around people. But my mission is to help people have such a deep connection because I believe that unless a person is complete, they will always seek another. So I aim and strive to help people feel a sense of wholeness within themselves. So let's say somebody's depressed. Let's go to the, the, the extreme. Let's say somebody's having suicidal thoughts, okay? Because unfortunately, during this time, there are so many people leaving our planet um, untimely. So if somebody's there and they're struggling in that moment and they're thinking of the pain that they're in and they want it to stop, let's go back to those three steps to happiness. Manage your mind, love your body, and be present. So in that present moment, they're in so much pain. So how could they manage their mind in that moment? Well, they're having negative thoughts that don't feel good to them. So we've been shown that, that thoughts can take around 20 seconds to build momentum. Just let that land, 20 seconds. So if I go, I'm really depressed, I'm really struggling right now, I don't wanna be here anymore. I have 19 seconds left to move that thought into a different direction. Like I'm having, it happened one, one time with you, Sandy. I was having a bit of a hard day. I think I was struggling with something. I was having a bit of a hard day and I couldn't get out of my head. And I thought to myself, who can I speak to right now that would help me with this particular thought? And I think I rang you. I had to do something anyway with, with magnesium and I rang you and you just held the space in such a way that allowed my mind to maneuver into a different direction. And I got off the phone and I felt lifted and inspired. So. You have 20 seconds to manage your mind. So you could call a friend, you could go and have a bath. Basically, if you are not feeling good, stop. Decide what is not making you feel good. Is it your mind in that moment? Is it your thought? Okay, stop what you're doing and refocus your attention into something else. Do something that feels good. And if you want an instant boost in your immune system, gratitude. Harvard did a study that a one thought about anger drops your immune system for six hours. Go to Spencer to study that one thought of gratitude increases your immune system. Oftentimes when people are suicidal or depressed, they have low immunity. They have low serotonin, dopamine, um, all these good chemicals. That Not enough released. magnesium. <laughs> Not enough magnesium. So, okay, instantly love your body if you're depressed put some cream on. And as I put the cream on my body every day, twice a day, I say things like this in my head. Thank you, arm. Thank you, hands. I love you. I think Thank doing something physical helps too, like walking in nature. So you might go Change to the beach, go for a walk, smell the air, breathe deeply, yes. get that circulation going because the more oxygen you get in your head, the more it moves you to the good brain chemicals and the feel good endorphins. Um, so you've got to so have enough. Yeah. Change, to, change your body. So yeah. the loving your body that, that, that comes under it, change your physiology. Exactly. If you're managing your mind, you are refocusing your thoughts because a lot of the times people that are depressed, they don't realize that 
they are not their thoughts. You no. are not the thought you are continually thinking. And if you want to stop thinking those thoughts, the only way to weaken those dendrites in your brain, think about your brain like it has a branch coming off a tree. The tree is the corpus callosum and the dendrites are the branches. The only way to stop those negative depressed branches is to create new ones. You can't just break off a branch that you've been growing for 20 years. So you can't just suddenly stop being angry about what happened in the past, but you can start to find the appreciation in that. You can start to be compassionate. You can start to put the cream on. You can start to go out for a walk. And eventually those small steps will turn into big steps. Yes, You've got to start somewhere. You know, you know depression is very much a spiritual um, as well as a physical thing. They both come together. So we... We have the mind-body interaction, so the mind needs to stay in control. And I do that by anchoring into my higher self, so my spiritual self. And I have the image, you know, those, those tarot cards where the, the guy is wrestling with the lion and that symbolizes the spiritual side of humanity wrestling with the physical, you know, environmental um, situation and who is going to be the boss who is in control so your spiritual self so you have to have knowledge and faith that that will win in the end and just relax into it so by doing the physical thing going for a walk having a magnesium bath or putting magnesium on starts to relax everything and rebalance everything so that it becomes easier for spirit to win that war and tame the beast, tame the lion, yes. and then we come I together. Like yeah, I like that, um, the, the, the tarot card vision. It reminds me of an analogy I heard about the higher self and the inner child. Someone um, explained it like this. They depicted it as, imagine you've got a mountain top and at the bottom of the mountain is a valley. And I can't say valley without saying a Welsh accent in the heart of the valley. So imagine you're at the top of the mountain and the person at the top of the mountain is your highest self. Now your highest self has the full view. You can see everything. It knows exactly what's ahead. But the inner child is playing aimlessly in the valley. And that child has no idea what's going on. So I believe that meditation is as powerful if not more than medication and when we medicate we are essentially finding our balance homeostasis equilibrium so if you want to tap into your higher self you've got to tap into the highest part of you which isn't guilt grief apathy shame blame hate you know all those lower level emotions so yes you've got to wrestle with the ego which is designed for protection pleasure and survival and often doesn't discriminate what's right or wrong or good or bad as per your beliefs it just does what feels good so you have to get ahead of your your ego it's always easier when, when you walk into nature as well because you're anchoring anchoring into the electrical system of the earth and its intelligence and that helps you realign kind of like a tuning fork when you're tuning an instrument your body is an instrument and it needs to retune with nature and that brings us back to the center to the core and through meditation and through sinking into that space into the zone of your existence which brings brings me to the point of you know we here for a reason we're here to have an adventure we're here to have we're on a journey and we have lots of journeys in the middle of that journey and we always need that stimulation of learning because we're here to play a game which is the game of life right so yes. we're just we're talking about how to play that game of life better to exactly. become better players and when we become better players we're happy things work I think the purpose of life is to have fun. What do you think, Sandy? I love you your think? philosophy. I absolutely <laughs> love it, to be happy, which brings us to the conclusion of this little discussion um, about, you know, we, how to be the boss and what the whole goal is to be happy and to have a lovely life experience and to share those life experiences with your, the cl people close to you because you're a whole person so when you're a whole person and you've addressed those issues in you when you're with others you empower them you have surplus energy that overflows you have life force that's plenty for yourself and also for others but then you don't want to be around energy suckers because some people have a, like a vacuum like a black hole and they suck everything in around them so you also have to be careful about uh, yeah I was going to say on that, Sandy, sorry to interrupt, but I think that's really important, like energy vampires, but also 
you know, you, you're in a beautiful marriage and have been for a lovely amount of years. It's inspiring. Um, and imagine if both of you managed your um, managed your level of joy and happiness before you walked in the door, as opposed to walking in the door and then you release all your bad day on him. He releases his bad day on you. Like, why are we not bringing our best to the table? Now, don't get me wrong. We are creatures that, you know, we need to vent. And sometimes we do need to have that gossip or that as a way of means of working out how we're feeling. But what if we all said that we had a sacred hour every morning when nobody touches you. And if it means you waking up at four, wake up at four, just to have your sacred hour. Could include meditation, music, a video of, ins of inspiration. But once you finish that sacred hour, then you bring your whole self to the table. Aren't you gonna have a much better day? So you looking after yourself, emergency situation on the plane, whose life jacket and vest and mask are we told to put on first? Our own, our own. What yeah. good are we to anyone else if we haven't looked after ourselves? And that's that's the primary message. We, we're here to be givers at the end of the day. How can you give to others and be useful to anyone if you're a vacuum, you know, you haven't replenished, you haven't... Well, you said, oh, don't love yourself. Do you remember our generations were like, you're so vain. When I was a little girl, I remember people saying, stop looking in the mirror, it's vain. And I thought, why can't I look in the mirror? It's me. And as I got older, I realized that this me is the only thing that I'm ever going to be guaranteed to have in this life. And I'm not allowed to love it. Are you kidding I, me? I have to love me. Uh, That's right. I yeah. have to love. But, so, but it's not an e egotistic way. It's not superficial. Oh. It's really loving you down to the core, all your, your warts and all, your blemishes, uh, the things that may not be perfect, it, like same as the magazine picture doesn't matter you are who you are and you have to love the whole you and and you're going to be living in your house your body for the rest of your life yeah so you may as well love the house that you live in otherwise that house is going to start crumbling and you know how expensive it is to renovate so you better start loving that house yes so yeah. one one of the most um enjoyable things i find in life is music and it's a frequency that helps us rebalance and get back to our core and feel really? happy and good. And so you we talked about. Lights up. Do, yeah. you, do you know that music is the only thing that lights up your whole brain? Is that right? All, all the yeah, left and the right test. side, the whole, the whole yeah, kit and caboodle? On, they put the EEG things on people's heads and they tested them while they were having a conversation, while they were listening to music, while they were being intimate with someone, while they were watching television and listening to music. What do you think was the most active activity in the brain that lit up and what do you think was the least activity um discordant noise so music lit up the entire brain and yes. television lowest brain function watching oh, television right. well that's discordant isn't it it's irritating yeah, exactly yeah. yeah, well, the music, they say, elicits so many memories. It elicits feelings, sensations, sense. So that's why it lights up the whole brain. And they use it for elderly people and for people with disabilities and, the, and it improves their brain function. Amazing research yeah. with music. So I know you're a bit of a musician and we arrange for you to have a little conclusion here, which is... Yes. Are you ready? Are happy. you ready? So, so people I'm can happy. find Daniela I'm via Facebook. So the Happiness Queen... And she's also an amazing musician, a beautiful soul. And we're going to finish today. I'm so excited. We're going to finish today with Daniela's rendition of the happy song. And um, well, whenever you're ready, take it away, my love. Thank you. And I do share a lot more music on Instagram under Daniela Malozzi Music. I think each of us came in this world with certain gifts and talents and if we take the time to nurture them and honor them, they can also be one of our greatest gifts. And I often sing as a means of therapy and a way to, yeah, I guess light people's brains up as well as my own. So uh, enjoy the happy song. Here we go. All right. And feel free to move. Remember we said, move your body. If ever you feel low, look high. That's a really good one to remember. If you're feeling low, look high. So right now, I invite you to shake and shout, shuffle, move the shoulders, feel good, move your body, raise your hands, shake, shake and feel good. Ooh. Ooh. 
might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine's here, you can take a break. I'm a hot air balloon that could go to space. Oh, with the air like I don't care, baby, by the way. Cause I'm happy, clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Clap along if you feel that happiness is the truth. Ooh. Clap along if you know what happiness is to you. Clap along if you feel that's what you want to do. Oh, happy, happy, happy. along if you feel the room without a view. Clap along if you feel that happiness is the truth. Ooh, ooh. Clap along if you know what happiness is to you. Clap along if you feel that's what you want to do. Cause happiness is up to you. Go. And remember, what you say to yourself stays in yourself. So singing lots of happy songs and feeling and listening to lots of happy music will go deep into your psyche. So thank you so much, Daniela. Thank you for coming today and having that really lovely chat. I so enjoyed it. Thank you, Sandy. I we love should do it again you. one day. <laughs> we could talk for hours and hours. I and know. Hours. I know. So absolutely. Really totally fun. Listening. Any conversations that people get to to listen to, because in my experience, the best times that I've ever learned something is whilst listening to something else or listening to someone else. My dad used to say, two ears and one mouth, Daniela. Listen more than you talk. I'm still working on that one, Sandy. I'm still working on that. But lovely to see you. Thank it's, you so much. Enjoy the journey, my love. Bye-bye. You too. Stay happy. Bye. If you enjoyed the video, please share with others. You can also subscribe to our channel to be notified of future videos. To be notified about new blogs and product special offers, please subscribe to our newsletters at electromagnesium.com.au.